Hey folks, Dave, the not so evil evil Viking 13, back once again here in the American Republic. Our kind of historical Empire Total War Let's Play, playing as, of course, the USA. As you guys can see here, we have quite the impressive fortifications going on here in Amsterdam. More and more armies keep arriving, we keep recruiting new armies, and the march is on to liberate Paris from the massive Austrian Empire that had conquered a good chunk of Europe. I've got a bunch more money to spend this turn, but that's going to have to wait because we've got to march on Paris right now while it is more or less undefended. You can see right here from the uh, the bar right there in the city that Paris does have, wow, actually quite a lot of garrisoned troops that you actually can't see. It's not a mobile army, but there is no additional army reinforcing the city right now. This really is our best time to strike. So, let's move in with General Deer, who is still a bit green. Your humble servant. Reinforcing him will be, of course, General Green, the hero of the USA. At the ready. And General Palmer. Now both of those armies are pretty banged up, so it will be up to General Deer to do most of the work. For war. That's a lot of garrison troops, thankfully mainly just firelock armed citizenry, garrisoned line infantry, and some battered remains of the Austrian armies hanging out still in the south of Paris. Unfortunately guys, I was not able to actually complete this siege battle of Paris because of a crash about 20 minutes into it. Rather than just scrap that footage, I'll give you guys a couple of minutes of highlights here and then I'll reload my save game and prep for an auto resolve because this particular battle having so many armies involved plus a star fort is just too much for the game to handle. So we are going to have to just build up a large surplus of troops and then auto resolve. But for now, Here's the highlights of how the battle would have gone if it hadn't crashed.
Well guys, as you just saw, that battle seems to have pushed this game and its engine to its limits, and it did crash about two-thirds of the way through the fight, right as we were charging into the fort with all of our cavalry to mop up their mortars and start hitting their infantry from behind. Now that was going to be a costly battle, but we were going to win it. Make ready. So what's going to happen now is, I didn't want to just scrap that footage because I yes, was uh, pretty happy with how it went. Uh, so I, I wanted to show you guys how I would have fought the battle, but instead of going through that whole fort battle again, because I do despise them, I'm going to spend some time recruiting and replenishing my troops, and we're going to auto-resolve it. Now if I auto-resolve it right now, we do lose. These armies need to be replenished. So for now, let's focus on the campaign map and spend some money. We've got a navy being repaired in the docks here. Estimated 52,000 income for next turn. Let's max out our recruitment as usual. More mortars, more cannons. Perfect. On the diplomacy front, what's going on here? Let's see if the Italian states will trade for a stupid amount of money. They've been reluctant so far. How about 5,000 gold? No, they really do hate us. How about Persia? Wow, these countries are truly angry with us. Most likely over our war with Austria and territory taking in Europe. Ha! Venice wants 29,000 gold for a trade agreement. Uh, screw you guys. I'll butter them up though. State gift. Let's do jewelry. 10,000 gold. Hey, they're actually friendly now. Request trade agreement. 5,000. Just out of curiosity. They're not up for it yet, but more trade will help our nation grow. And we really do have plenty of cash to spend right now. Speaking of which... Let's build the National Academy in Philadelphia. Anything else we can build? Don't really need more construction there in New York. The population is already quite happy. I like leaving this small Native American Weaver's Lodge in the Algonquin Territory, just as a nod to all the Native nations that we had to Sir. roll over in our quest to the Pacific. Upgrade the College of Divinity here in Texas. I guess I'll recruit more garrison troops for down here. You have one full stack army to watch the border. Hopefully Mexico won't get any more crazy ideas about a cross-border war against Texas. And I'll build some line infantry, <laughs> build, recruit some line infantry, and a 12-pounder cannon, as well as a general for Santa Fe. There's not a lot going on out here, but I'd rather have, uh, you know, at least a small or medium-sized army out here in the far west, just because travel time is so extreme. More plantations, or cotton warehouses. We have metal roads there. Metal roads for the Cane Tuck territory. Let's 
Savannah, Georgia needs some metalled roads. As does the Algonquin Territory. Whoa, how did this farm escape my attention for so long? Palatial Estate. You know, we can actually crank our tank our taxes back down there, and that's gonna still give us an income of thirty-three thousand, but really boost national happiness and help our territories to continue to grow. I mean we have so much money. Wow, Spain was really into that <laughs> revenge invasion in the Carolinas. Thankfully, I was able to persuade them diplomatically quite a few episodes ago now. Our army of the Carolinas, where did I go here? Does need more troops though. Looks like... Line infantry and horse, both actually. Alright, down to 236 gold. Everything's looking pretty good. I'm going to cancel some of this artillery and actually recruit line infantry for this army that's in Amsterdam. Line infantry and horse. There we are. I guess I'll cancel one of those roads, maybe the Cane Tuck territory. Just so I can top that army off over the next turn. Alright guys, there we have it. That is the summer of 1831. Let's see what happens next. Look at Great Britain rampaging through Sweden. I like it. Austria is pulling some troops back towards the core of their empire. I think they're starting to waver and get a little bit nervous about my foothold in Europe. Despite their best efforts being thrown at my troops, America is holding on to Amsterdam. Wow, they have a ridiculous number of fleets though. Well guys, it is the winter of 1831, and due to some trade route raiding on the part of the Swedish, our income was only 21,000 this turn. Nothing to <laughs> be too concerned about, that's for sure. And our next army has arrived from, I believe, Mexico. Question is, can we get through the English Channel right here and land in France. This is not a very powerful navy. 
Ooh, lots of recruitment too. Let's cautiously peek. Ah, uh, the Austrians have the channel blocked. I feel like this is one of the ridiculous parts of using Darth Mod. This single Austrian navy has... Wow. Eight heavy first-rate ships of the line. Even if I could match that, that wouldn't be a fun naval battle. That would just be ridiculousness. Yes, Admiral, that is indeed land. Thank you. Alright, we're sneaking our way in so far. And we have landed in uh, Salais, France. We can now disembark with our army. Disembark with our army. And there we have it. The Austrians have reinforced Paris. Anything more? Forward. But I wonder if we can auto resolve now. Sir. These armies aren't quite full strength yet. At the ready. What does General Palmer need? Cannon, it looks like. Let's send him two. They can't quite make it. Oh, our armies are blocking the way. There we go. What a complicated mess of full stack armies. Once again, Darth Maud gets a little bit ridiculous at times. Sir. And General Green, you could use. Hmm. I think a regiment of horse. Move this random militia up as well. Why not? Okay. Sir. Who's our best full strength Your general? General Cornwallis. What does the auto resolve say now? The Austrians have an entire second reinforcing army, it looks like. Yeah, we're still losing, so we're just going to have to stack the auto-resolve until the game accepts our win, uh, because they do have the star for it. So I'm going to reload my save. Uh, I really just refuse to play that fort battle again. It's uh, it's like pulling teeth. It's not, it's not any real kind of fun, and after playing almost 20 minutes of it already, I have no urge to go back and do it again. Okay, and we're back. That's still a ridiculous array of troops surrounding Paris, so hopefully soon we'll be able to move in and take it out. Yes. In the meantime, it looks like Amsterdam is very secure. The battered Austrians are maintaining their distance. And things are looking pretty good. I'm just not sure what kind of timetable I can give to these ridiculous wars. With an estimated 18,000 income next turn, I think I'll leave my taxes as they are for just a bit longer. Um, then I will be cranking them up, though. Aye, sir. 
Ugh, the Spanish fleets, I'm sure are, yep, peppered with heavy first rates. There's just no enjoyment in fighting all of that. It's, it's just insane. Make ready. We'll get a few more troops here in Santa Fe. Militia, howitzers, line infantry. Yeah, that should do it. We'll give the Kaintuck Territory the funds for their roads once again. And we're actually starting to run low on upgrade options. <laughs> so many uh, different areas working on technology. We're actually rapidly approaching the end of all of our tech trees. This really is getting to be late game. I guess, honestly, it it should be over a year after I started this series. What else can we spend the money on? Everything has been upgraded already. Let's see if Venice will be willing to trade yet. We'll even offer them 7500 Well, they are not in need of money at all. They're offering me 230,000 gold for a trade agreement in exchange for the Algonquin territory. That's ridiculous. Let's clear the offer. Request trade agreement. We'll do 1200. 12,000. And we'll give them 10 turns of military access. Now they want Georgia and the Algonquin territory. Ugh. Fine. We will give Persia a state gift. And then suggest that we trade. They want Georgia. Craziness. Oh well. Even with the blockades from the Austrians and the Swedish, we do have plenty of income, plenty of trade. Let's just give the UK some war money for their war as they rampage through Sweden. And the never ending stream of recruitment in Amsterdam must continue. Maybe I should send General Armstrong west as well. Any further orders? Waiting for yours. Whoops, he went by himself. Humble, sir. Let's reattach him to his army. That only leaves three full stacks in Amsterdam, but most of them are quite experienced. I think it will be okay, and we'll keep recruiting next turn. I really want to auto-resolve Paris in this episode, and we're running low on time. Let's go ahead and see what happens next.
Alright, Austria is making a move here. They're moving up with one army. I should be able to auto-resolve this. Not bad. Once again, they're moving up. This time, I think I will actually deploy and carefully defend. I don't want to wear all my troops down too much. Alright, let's keep this deployment straightforward. Rocket battery in the back. Let's put the puckle guns on this slight rise right here. Right at the ridgeline. Then a cannon battery right there. And horse artillery here in the left. Actually, he really can't see much. Let's do it right here. We'll just give them some line infantry in the back here. We're going to have to spread some of these guys out once the battle starts, but that shouldn't be too bad. Let's put our rockets up a bit closer just so they can maintain a longer range into their lines. Mr. General, hide behind the building. Regiment of Horse, you are Group 1. Oh, actually, we only have two units of Horse. Alright then. Oh, no, we have Dragoons, okay. There we go. I think we're all set. The artillery is deployed. Let's use shrapnel shot for everything. And go. Ooh, hit the cannons for sure. Good hits. the rockets. Minor kills. What a good even spread. Oh, that shrapnel shot. Nasty. Horse are going for my lone cannon. Oh, deploy, guys, deploy.
canister shot. Fire. Fire, darn it. Fire! There it is. the artillery right here. At least it looks impressive. Oh, we killed their general. Light infantry deploy stakes. Dragoons, go ahead and start flanking for that artillery. Canister shot. Open up. Ooh, they're charging. Men bringing the ranks. A desperate charge, but one that has failed them. Dragoons meet household cavalry. Household cavalry. Enjoy my carbines. That household cavalry is dangerous. They're so experienced, it's ridiculous. Let's go ahead and get more shrapnel shot going down range. Horse artillery, go ahead and pack up. Well, things are looking pretty good here. Our light dragoons are breaking, but their household cavalry is very injured. And they're not going to survive that charge at my lines. Ah! 
Let's take out that horse artillery. What is this guy doing? It's a horse artillery just like wandering around my lines. Go ahead and close our lines here. There goes the household cavalry finally. cannon got intercepted. Not sure what it was doing. Let's go after the next one. Horse fall back. Let's not get shot in the back. Oh, we have a general's bodyguard being forced in here. All artillery focus on their line infantry and their artillery. Hmm, we're down to one cannon on this artillery. Two on this one. Must be their horse artillery working on it. Let's get that general to safety. Hmm. They still have some troops back here. Let's actually bring one of my better infantry units around here to reinforce the right flank. They've seen a lot of action. We swing our lines back around just a bit. I'm going to move our puckle guns too. Now we have just a bit of protection behind the wall. Oh, 
These last few units are holding on stubbornly. Artillery. Yeah, that's done for. Take it out. I just hit my own cannon. Five losses. Charge, finish them off. Let's run this unit down and call that a victory. Alright, we deployed 7,500 men, only lost 358, and killed 1250. Fall back, Austria, fall back. An Austrian army has traveled all the way to North America and invaded Great Britain up in Canada. That was quite the naval invasion, wow. And now we are in the summer of 1832. It was an election winter. And we have, uh, it looks like, maintained our current party in the government. Our president adds plus four to diplomatic relations. Head of state's decent. Treasury secretary's decent. Everybody is actually pretty experienced. Good stuff. 73% government popularity. That's strangely low. General Bellany has died of natural causes. Let's recruit a new one. Lots of morale improvement in battles. <laughs> a lot, actually. Wow, tons of construction, too. Our first naval hospital is now ready. 
Where was that? New England, I think? Strange, I can't find it. Anyway, some recruitment in New Mexico. Where's that Austrian army? Oh, you guys have landed in the hornet's nest. The British have so many troops up in Canada, it's ridiculous. Let's just go ahead and give Great Britain a little bit of money to help cover the cost of wiping the floor with that Austrian army. Let's get replenishment going on our defensive armies in the Netherlands. It's a bit expensive. Sir. We'll also continue our troop recruitment with artillery, howitzers, and infantry. Let's not forget cavalry, though. There we go. Okay. Now, the question is, with a ridiculous amount of armies arrayed around Men Paris, forward. And so, with Nathaniel Green and his replenished army leading the way, can we actually take out this stupid fort with auto resolve? More orders. Arm line for oh, he's by himself. Siege broken. <laughs> Entire army, attack, please. For war. Let's demand their surrender. Surrender refused. <laughs> on, there we go. We only lost 1,000 men and we have taken Paris. Which is quite unhappy. We're probably going to have to fight some rebels. And there are some stray Austrian armies still lingering about. But it now belongs to us. Tons of generals trait gained. Uh, traits gained. Plus one morale, plus one command. Command when besieging. 10% recovery of battle casualties. Plus one morale. What a legacy. Nathaniel Green, at the age of 90, has led the liberation of Paris by American forces in the summer of 1832, taking it from the Austrian Empire. That is glorious. Let's actually scratch all this recruitment. And... Rebuild the government's offices, the Imperial Palace, as well as the Great Museum. I should get the population a bit happier. Make ready. Let's make sure plenty yes, of experienced armies are still within range to reinforce. Make ready. Impossible, sir. On both sides of Paris. Your humble servant, sir. At the ready, yes, sir. Move that militia up too, why not? Your humble servant. Alright. With Paris secured, let's march General Palmer back into the Netherlands. Immediately. Ready and there is a force awkwardly hanging out from the Austrians in our territory, not sure what they're up to. Yes, sir. I wonder what auto resolve would do. Ready for order. Not Proud and victorious. We lost 1214. And they are pushed Fight. back. Plus one morale gained. Let's replenish you as much as possible. Our navy has been repaired. It's a very experienced navy. We still don't have enough first rates to go up against the Austrians, unfortunately. Ugh. We're going to be spending a lot of money on naval forces.
for now, let's raid this trade route up here. I don't think there's any other Swedish navies that can come and intercept us. Except for that gigantic one right there. Okay, <laughs> let's stick together, not push our luck. I am going to raise taxes. And that should help fund some replenishment as we try to rebuild our conquered territories. This being a more historical Let's Play, I do not want to hold on to Flanders or France or even the Netherlands. My goal is to use these territories as liberated territories to fund the continued liberation of all of these areas from the Austrian Empire and once I have subdued the Austrians and the Swedish, I will begin doling out territories to my allies, including France and Great Britain. France, of course, is not very happy about me taking France, but they'll probably change their tune once I hand it over to them. Wow, I'm getting really tired of seeing first-rate ship icons on every single navy. That's ridiculous. It's almost not even worth investing in naval forces because it would take me another year of playing this campaign to even get close to what they've built. I guess that's just the strangeness that comes with Darth Maud. You do get some of the bad with all of the cool stuff that, uh, that it fixes and adds. Anyway, for now, that is definitely going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you all next time.